There were a couple of contenders for this title, maybe like Typhus Kane and his right hand Jurgen with the magic sack, we've got Alpharius and Omegon, you've got Gazgul, Mag Uruk Thraka, and Commissar Yarek, Alexis Pollux and Barabist Antioch, even Karn the Betrayer and Argol Tall. But I think we are all forgetting the single best bromance. That between Fulgrim and Fulgrim. Jokes aside, it's Vargard Obi-Ron or Nemesar Zandra. No other bromance in 40k extends between space, time, and flesh and blood. What other bromance could have hoped to survive biotransference and a 60 million year long power nap? Vargard Obi-Ron, not Vanguard, is a Lich Guard or a Praetorian of a high ranking Necron official and the legal overlord of the Necron crown world of Gidrim. Ruling this crown world is probably the second favorite Necron in the entire community, just barely beating Trizen the Infinite, and that's Nemesar Zondrik. These two bros first met when they were first still of the flesh in a series of unremembered and unimportant skirmishes in the swamps of Yama, staying together through all later campaigns and even suffering the horrible fate of biotransference at each other's side. To say that all of this has made Zondrik a little bit insane is an understatement, as despite being a soulless machine for over 60 million years, this guy still thinks he's made of flesh and bone. And Obi-Ron, his loyal companion and Vargard, has completely given up on trying to wake up his bro. Zondrik employs food tasters to make sure nobody poisons his food, despite the fact that he has no blood or organs to poison. Imagine being the poor diplomat sent to negotiate with the overlord of a particularly strong noble Necron house. You arrive onto a planet covered in black marble, all lit up by these enormous green pylons of light. You make your way into the most ornately decorated feast hall you have ever seen, and you expect to watch your host maybe eat a little bit of metal shavings, maybe some hot resin, some hot wax. Nope. Way more uncomfortably, you see a group of blank-faced automata shoving food down their mouth holes, and you get to watch and listen to it slowly slop its way to the floor. Now, mind you, it's rude of you to pay attention to this, or act disgusted at all, because for all intents and purposes, Zondrik 100% believes himself to still be of the flesh, and the same goes for those around it. I can't see him employing robot food tasters, so he most likely has to perceive all other Necrons as their former Necron tier. Combined with this, his inability to correctly perceive his surroundings, Zondrik also retains an honorable visage to the point where it makes a lot of both flesh and metal beings uncomfortable, giving orcs and Tyranids the proper respects and honors of a duel, allowing for quarter to be given and retreats to be allowed, also regularly capturing enemy commanders and temporarily quartering them, all of which nobody else with a Necron society does. This even pisses off his bromosexual lover, Obi-Ron, so much that he regularly has to go into the cells of these prisoners of war and just so happen to kill them. And Zondrik on some level understands it, he will look at the body that has the exact same weapon marks as Obi-Ron's body, and just chalk it up to coincidence. Vargar Obi-Ron also has one of the most broken abilities in all of 40k, with the ability to essentially teleport within a limited range. I'm not entirely sure what that range is, but we know that anytime Nemesor Zondrik is in trouble or his life is threatened on a battlefield, within a split second Obi-Ron appears and the problem is dealt with, only for him to then disappear back into the battlefield. This also applies to the ever vindictive political movings of of the Necron dynasties, as all throughout Gidrim and its surrounding space, Obi-Ron has such deep connections and informants in place that no attempt on Zondrik's life has succeeded, and believe me, there have been many attempts. It's really unclear as to if Nemesar Zondrik is just pretending to be insane to pass the time and mess with everyone, or if the 60 million year long power nap really did mess with his internal processes. The community is really divided on this because on one hand, having a corrupted robot makes a lot of logical sense, and it uses the least amount of logical leaps and the least amount of assumptions. But this is Warhammer, and some of the best characters in 40k are those pretending to be British nobility. Hell, we have Trezin the Infinite, whose entire shtick is being just the British Royal Museum. All of this is to say that in an immortal Egyptian robot pretending to be the same ethnicity that in our history devastated Egypt is such a beautiful bit of irony that we don't really get to see too much with 40k anymore. You know, we have Mag Uruk Thraka and maybe that being Margaret Thatcher, but you know, 40k isn't edgy like that anymore. 
I'm going to end this with a quick quote because this is just a filler video in between part two of the Flood Versus as well as the other UNSC 40k mashups or universe combinations, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is my favorite quote from Zondrick and it breaks the fourth wall unlike anything else we see in 40k. Even if we all cease to be flesh and blood millions of years ago, which of course, I don't believe for a moment Zondrick actually winked, wouldn't it have suited us better to live in denial of that, as some fools might say I had done? Wouldn't it be better, Obi-Wan, just to accept our fate and enjoy immortality for the everlasting life of merry campaigning it has proven to be?